2007 LS 460. Going to replace out these two uh, upper control arms on it. And if I can get in there, you can kind of see where it looks like it's already cracked there. And this side, maybe you can see it. You kind of see there in the center. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We had to take off the two castle nuts. Uh, I believe those are 18 millimeter, I believe. Remove the wheel, put the car up on a jack stand underneath there. I just supported it underneath the uh, uh, the sway bar. Um, so we'll take, take these off, try and pop these two uh, ball joints out. And then it'll be pretty straightforward after that. This is the toughest part is getting these busted free on some of them. So this video will be a little choppy since I'm just doing it one handed. Um, but the arms that are on there now are, uh, are mass control arms, um, both of them. I'm going to replace them with some Rock Auto uh, control arms. I think there were Power Pros or something like that. They were about $18 a piece for the ones I'm going to put on. The mass ones, I think when I bought these a few years ago, about two, three years ago, they were probably looking at about a... $30, $35 dollars a piece, but Mass is no longer its own company. They've been taken up by uh, Dorman, so uh, I'm not sure if Mass even has their name on them anymore since Dorman's the uh, parent company now. But these uh, just didn't work. Uh, I think when I put these on the last time, they didn't, I forgot to preload them, which caused them to fail pretty quick and on both sides. I've already done the passenger side uh, a week ago and that was pretty straightforward. I did preload those. So I'm gonna get these two done and then um, see if we can get rid of some of that little annoying little tap knock that goes on, on on slow speeds. But we'll end it here and we'll pick up again in a few steps. The uh, control arms, uh, the ball joints popped out. Uh, hit a little PB blaster a few times probably dozen hits with the sledge on the sides. Uh, these, these loosened up pretty pretty good. Uh, the first the other side, I had one that took forever to come off of there, but um, anyway, so I wanted to give you a little check on that one. Uh, next, we'll start with the, uh, the arms on each side. You'll see a, uh, I think it's a 14 millimeter bolt there at the bottom. We'll loosen that up uh, enough. Usually I take it out. And then this 14 millimeter, the slide pin, um, we'll loosen that. Uh, that way you can take this uh, this arm away because to get to that nut there to loosen it is tight fit, even tighter on this side, I think. Uh, but I'll show you that in a few seconds. Another quick uh, update, move this out. So what you're doing is you're taking that 14 millimeter off on the front side, you have this bolt that slides through the cylinder, 14 millimeter. Um, it's just this guy here and that slides out. So you pull that out. And at the top, you have that 14 millimeter. You loosen that, don't take it out. That way it gives you some maneuverability. Because if you notice that uh, end of the bolt there and the nut that holds this thing on, um, you had to use two uh, wrenches Usually I use a box end on one and maybe a ratchet on the other side just to get it going so you can pull this out. On the back side, you don't have that second bolt. You just have the top pivot, kind of like that one. And then you have the bottom uh, 14. There's no slide like you have on this side. So you just have to remove that one, loosen that enough where you can get this to pivot and move away. And then you can get your uh, wrenches on, those, uh, on that bolt and that nut. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, we got this out. Like I said, once you kind of lift this up here, um, you see the little holes there where the uh, upper control arm fits. So you take that 14 millimeter bolt out of there. You kind of got to uh, hold it on the nut side or on the bolt side. Take a ratchet nut, take a ratchet um, 
on the other side, loosen that up, and then just slide that out. So this is what the uh, old one looks like. I don't know if you can see it. When it's relaxed, it's you know not looking as bad. You can see some rips there, and that's a good view. So this is what I'm putting in. This is the one from Rock Auto, and I don't know if it's Power Pro, but it's about 18 bucks. Uh, a closer look at the middle and the back. Comparison-wise, they feel about the same. They're the same weight. Um, you have the uh, castle nut and a good uh, uh, cotter pin that goes through it. Better, I like these better than the other ones where you bend them. These are reusable if you need to. But we just gotta take that boot off of there, that little plastic cover, and then we're good to go. Okay. Now we've added the uh, new control arms. You notice that the uh, stud on this side is shorter than this one, and that's must be by design on this one. Um, but it will uh, tighten up and it will get the cotter pin through there. It's just, it's just shorter. Must be so they can tell them apart, but the design is different anyway. The Trying to get this one back on was a bit of a pain. Trying to get that uh, bolt to slide back through there because you have to pull it out, this whole hinge, and then trying to manipulate it where you can slide the pin in while you're holding this in. So it took a little bit of extra time. I had to loosen this a little bit more because there's a little stop bolt there that keeps this top bracket from basically uh, kicking all the way out. So loosen it up enough where it drops down and then you can kind of hinge this up higher and then hold the bolt on the right and then hold this and then slide it through there and then set it back down. I haven't tightened up the uh, nuts yet. So on the compression side, as you can see, I just use a block of wood underneath the, uh, the uh, uh, rotor so we can compress that spring because the height between here to the center of the lug there, um, normally for me anyway, has been 16 inches from there straight up to there. But when you drop it down, it, it's like almost 19 to 20 inches by the time that relaxes. So I just uh, uh, raise this up, get it between a 16 inch gap, and then you go ahead and tighten down those uh, bolts as, as much as you can. The spec says about 33, I think, upper 30s. The uh, castle nuts, I think, are like around 39 to 40. Um, so you can kind of go with that. You can, you're not going to get a torque wrench in there. So I think you just kind of 30, 30 pounds isn't that much. So I think you'll be able to tell when you've, uh, uh, hit that mark. You might go over a little bit, but you know, I think you'll be able to tell what 30 pounds is. Same thing for these. You don't really have to use a torque, but you know, if you've got one, use it. Um, but, the, but we should be good. So I'm going to tighten these bolts down and then, um, Tighten those down on the castles and then drop that down and put the wheel back on. All right. Last look, I got the uh, castle nuts torqued down. Um, put in the uh, cotter pins. Everything's back on and bolted in. I put a little silicone uh, lube on the bushings on the outside and a little bit down in there um, just to kind of help lubricate a little bit. And then all we got to do now is take the jack stand out and put the tire back on, torque that down when I get it on the ground, and drop that back down to the ground. So that's pretty much it for the control arms. Uh, like I said, I did the uh, passenger side a week ago. I did notice an improvement in the uh, noise and uh, feel. Uh, so I'm hoping that now that this side is balanced, uh, we should be good. I'll probably get an alignment done before too long. Uh, I had one done last spring um, when I had some other work done, but it seemed to track okay this week with the right passenger side done. So we'll just check it out. I'll probably get it done in the next uh, couple weeks or so. It's a snowy day out here today, so um, probably get this out on the road after a little bit. But anyway, that's just what I wanted to show you how it's done in case uh, anybody out there was wondering. Thanks.